gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary? Chris, the herons are back. And we got messy. What's going on? What, 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 what? Where is the information? I guess we're getting ready for a sister kissing fiesta. I felt like we were playing a 2 -way. It was just a two eight. Let me tell you, Danny is about to get destroyed in the chat. So you are we kissing every sisters, time. Chris? And maybe stepsisters, but not regular sisters. I've done a little bit of research on him. When it comes I to know. FIFA, this guy's 68. We're gonna have the greatest player of all time on the team. If there's a time to believe, it's now. It looks like a heron shat all over it. So you guys are literally getting excited for a rank 65 player on FIFA 23. We got some pretty good FIFA cards on our squad now, all right? Yeah, I understand, Kevin. So this is how this is how we scout our players here on the show. <laughs> Just look at FIFA cards. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Chris, the hair on the back. Actually, Chris isn't here yet. Uh, Chris got caught up in traffic. He's still not home, but I didn't want to keep you guys waiting. So I am on here by myself, but uh, a disappointing result today. Uh, Messi came back. Things were obviously dull in the first half because, well, we had our, I don't even want to call it a B team. It felt like a C team playing. And, um, I mean, I guess they held their own outside of a stupid slide tackle by Sailor inside his own box. Ended up going down 1-0. But then the Cavalry came out in the second half. Kind of felt like things turned around. And we still managed to only come out with a draw. Um, but uh, we, Chris said he's on his way. And... Um, I wasn't at the stadium, actually. I didn't get to go to the game today. Not that I didn't get to go. I was uh, actually busy with something else. Uh, like I told you guys uh, an episode ago, uh, my wife is pregnant. And today we, uh, we had a little gender reveal. So we went ahead, kicked the soccer ball, and we got a, a little baby hair on on the way. Another little princess. So we got that going. Didn't make it to the game, but I had my own little celebration. And uh, we wait for Chris because apparently it was crazy getting out of there. So uh, here we go. Uh, and thank you for everybody saying congrats. Uh, that's baby number three for me. So we'll see how that goes. All right. So let's start at the very beginning. Starting 11. Now, I know this was a, a, hot, a big topic of conversation, obviously. Uh, let me see if I can slide this over for myself. Uh, this is a, a big topic of conversation, obviously, because, um, well, like you said, or like I said, this is obviously a C team. We had Sunderland. Avilas, for some reason, was playing out in the midfield with Gressel. We had Borgelin. I don't mind Borgelin. I, don't, I think Borgelin hasn't had enough of an opportunity to really contribute. And, uh, and still, more people saying congrats. Appreciate you guys. Uh, but why is Borgelin playing wide? Borgelin doesn't have the pace nor the footwork to produce out wide. He is a through and through number nine. He is a striker that needs service inside the box and there's absolutely no reason to have him out wide there was a few times that i saw him trying to to beat out a, a, a ball now i will tell you that when he is running down the touch line and he has defenders on his back his body is so wide that although he doesn't have the pace to outrun anybody people can't get around him and he ends up getting fouled most of the time whenever he does have or he's trying to win a ball on the touch line but uh it doesn't make sense to me why that keeps happening um, so that was one thing that I was disappointed with the starting 11. Then again, who else could have played out there? I mean, I guess you could have had Alfonso out on the right and maybe Negri up top, Noah Allen as a left back, and then put somebody else at center back. We were just so thin with all the injuries and the fact that we were trying to rest people for Wednesday that it felt like this game was just, it was almost like a throwaway. Like I, I want to say that, uh, a draw the way it happened sucks but with the circumstances the fact that we're just waiting for wednesday the fact that we wanted to rest all our big guys i felt like a draw was okay we pre well, i predicted a draw i think chris predicted a win but all in all i'm okay with a draw with the circumstances we're not losing i i, I didn't check the standings exactly where we are after this result i think after this result right now we sit at third we are third in the east in this league if you're not losing, you're going to stay at the top. If you can, can continue to, I don't know, sneak out one point, uh, one pointers every week, not that I want that. But again, given the circumstances, I mean, a, it's not necessarily the worst result in the world. Um, so the first half, 
I felt like it was relatively boring. We couldn't get much done, and it felt like the Rapids had control, but they just couldn't finish in the final third. So I guess defensively we were looking okay. Uh, obviously, Ryan Saylor, why he would go for a slide tackle so recklessly inside of his own box, it, it makes absolutely no sense to me. Ryan Saylor obviously doesn't play much, so when he does, he needs to have a good head on his shoulders. And and for those of you that are, are in the chat, I know I'm just randomly here. I, I'm going to try my best to put your uh, your your, uh, your comments up. But again, Chris is usually the one that runs this, so it's hard to talk and focus in on your chat at the same time. Um, so Ryan Saylor really, it, it perplexed me why he would do such a silly thing. Um, and and I, honestly, it ended up costing us the game. I know that we we got that second goal late, and we'll, we'll get into that in a second. But in all actuality, like, why on earth would you go for such a, a, a reckless play? And Leandro Fernandez is saying, uh, throw away Danny, really. What the hell are you talking about? Stop defending the coach's decision. Uh, I'm, I'm not defending the coach's decision. I'm saying, given the circumstance, when I saw this starting lineup, I would have been happy with a draw. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm not saying I want a draw. But when you look at this starting 11, you think, if I get a draw, when you think about the fact that we are focused in on Wednesday's game for the Champions Cup, that's what really matters. When you look at that, the fact that Negri is playing his first game back, you got Noah Allen and Saylor as your center backs. You have David Ruiz as right back, which he didn't look bad, by the way. You have Toto Aviles for some reason out there in the midfield somewhere. And you have Borgelin playing as a wide forward. Like, when you look at this... And maybe you're saying that maybe he could have put something better out there. But literally, when you look at the bench, it was Dos Santos. He's not going to play, obviously. He's the backup goalie. Then you have Alba. You want to rest him. Busquets, you want to rest him. Kremaki isn't ready. Freire, you want to rest him. Gomez, you want to rest him. Messi, want to rest him. Suarez, you want to rest him. Now, if you want to say maybe Wagon should have played, maybe. He, he's, he should be pretty fresh. But everybody else on the bench, you wanted to rest him for Wednesday. So maybe he could have come out with a different formation, right? With a 4-4-2 and have Borgin and Campana up top by themselves and, and have four wide in the midfield. So maybe if you're saying that, but given the, the lineup that we had to start this game, a draw, again, I'm not saying I want a draw. I'm not saying that Tata should, should uh, get a pass for putting Borgin out wide and obviously in the midfield. But considering the players that we had available to us, a draw isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. Now, the way it ended up playing out definitely hurts. It definitely makes you feel bad. But, I mean, the way we got there also, I, I, I'm sure that minute number 60, people were feeling pretty good also. But, again, the first half, um, it ended, the, I guess, again, if it wasn't for that penalty, our defense wasn't giving up a lot. And um, I'm here trying to find uh, this game right here. We weren't giving up a lot, and then all in all, let's see. Um, possession, we held possession this game in the first half. We had, well, it was actually 50-50 possession in the first half. Uh, we had seven total shots, two shots on target, to their one shot on target. I mean, we, for it being the B, C team, whatever you want to call it, in the first half, they they played decent, I would say. Uh, obviously, I'm not necessarily thrilled about the result, but again, it could have been a lot worse. We went into the half 1-0, and then we all knew that eventually Messi and friends would come on at some point. Now, I thought that Messi would only be out there for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I was very surprised when he was out there to start the second half. And with that said, I think uh, Mr. Chris Duran finally got home from that two-hour drive how are you doing, sir? Good, good, man. I had to make a couple of pit stops, but uh, but yeah, finally back. It was uh, it was crazy, man. I I I want to get into more of like the feel in the stadium and the starting lineup. Yes, I I, go for it, because, yeah. Because I, like I was I was telling them to start the show that I wasn't there, and also Chris, uh, Chris, I haven't talked to Chris today. Uh, Chris, uh, look what I got here. Uh, hey, there we go. Right. Nice. Uh, that's right. I got a little, girl. A little baby girl. A little baby girl awesome, on the way. Man. Yeah, awesome. There we go. So that's um, real. so yeah, I, I wasn't at the game though. So please fill me in. How was the, the experience at the stadium? 
Uh, you know, it's crazy because uh, when the game started, and, you know, we got a guy named Mike that sits uh, in our seats next to us, and he was he kind of looked at me, and I looked at him, and I said, man, it feels kind of like the old days, huh, in the beginning. Like the security guards, they were they were like talking to each other, like congregating, congregating. Everybody was distracted. Everybody was like not really caring because like Messi's not on the court. Uh, I mean, not on the field. Here I am talking about court. You know, I want to bring appreciate, something up. Uh, appreciate hold on, all hold those on. congrats, by the way. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's a beautiful thing, guys. Uh, Alejandro saying I was missing Chris's white wall, and Anton John it, it says Chris doing white on white again. You know what, guys? Guys, you know, I ran into someone at the stadium, and shout out to King. I think it was B King that I ran into at the stadium. He told me, he's like, you know what? Forget about you guys that are clowning on my white wall. I got all this stuff. I'm not, I'm gonna get I'm gonna give it a week. You guys are on probation. How about that? <laughs> and you know what? Yes, I'm wearing sleeves for the third episode in a row, Mr. Krabs. All Ooh. you losing your bets, all of you. So it felt kind of like the old times. It felt kind of like the old times in terms of like the first 40, 45 minutes. Um, but yeah, I mean, when Messi got on the field, like the whole stadium erupted. And it really got to me because I feel like I wish that there was more involvement from all over the stadium, not just from the supporters group and in the North Stand. I really wish that people would get a little bit more involved. Um you know, with the singing and the stomping. I don't know why everybody stomps off beat. You guys don't know how to dance? One, <laughs> two, three. One, two, three. Like, you guys don't know how to dance? Like, you guys don't catch beats? People don't know how to catch a beat? So, it's, and it's you, not easy. And this right here is what I walked away with. Vice City Lucas mentioning in the comments, Franco Negri is amazing. I miss him. He is a machine. Guys, that's the one thing I wanted to point out. The Punisher is back. The Punisher is back. I mean, I don't know what you thought, Danny, but I was like, I was, I was amazed that he's back. It is nice to see him back, and I'll put because I know you weren't here when I was going over the starting eleven. I'll put it back on the, on the, on, yeah. the, on the screen. It was I nice to see Negri, but when you look at the pairing of Allen and Sailor at center back, that's rough. Toto Aviles randomly in the midfield. That makes no sense yeah. to me. And yeah, then the, I, I think I, more than more, more than all of that, because I mean, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna be very. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I was double screening it today because WrestleMania was on. I was watching WrestleMania with my kids, and I was watching the game. So I didn't focus in on where Toto Aviles was exactly. It's very possible that he was almost playing like a third center back, and they were playing with three in the back. You'd have to tell me, or maybe somebody in the chat can tell me, but I could see that being a possibility. But what really gets me is why is Borgelin playing as a wide forward? I don't he doesn't have nor the it. pace nor the technique to, to, to be productive out there. He is a nine that should be in the box, receiving service and finishing in front of the goal. Like, I don't see what, the, like, obviously Tata sees him in, at, in training and maybe he sees something that I haven't seen yet, but I, I don't get why Borgelin would be out there. And this is what I see because Hammy mentioned Aviles was low key cooking. I mean, Aviles, he wasn't bad and he wasn't good. He's kind of like a, a, a lower level um, redondo, I guess. Tall, lanky, can be able to play with his feet you, here and there. You mean by, by, by stature, not by actually. Yeah, by stature. Like, and I guess. Not by. Not by no, not by not skill. By no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Okay, got gotcha, you. Understood. All I'm saying is when it comes to this this starting lineup right here, I looked at it and I'm like, what? What the fuck is going on in Miami? What what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, Borgelin is playing a wing. You have when Gomez at, on the bench. Well, this is one of the things that I brought up though. When you look at the subs, you have Dos Santos, backup goalie, so obviously he can't play. Then you have Busquets, you're resting him for Wednesday. Kiramaki isn't ready yet. Freire just got back from injury, resting him for Wednesday. Gomez, he ran more than anybody on this past Wednesday, so you're resting him for Wednesday. Messi, obviously, resting for Wednesday. Suarez, resting for Wednesday. Weigan, I thought he should play because he should be pretty fresh, yeah. but resting him for Wednesday, apparently. 
So everybody on the bench is ready to play on Wednesday. So there isn't much else he could have done on the starting lineup outside of changing the formation, which I think would have made sense. I don't see why he wouldn't have gone 4-4-2 and had Campana and Borgelin as as lone strikers back there or, or a duo of striker, strikers. Well, that would have made sense because Alfonso, I've seen that he's played like a wing, but he's also played sort of a midfield as well. Uh, and Alejandro's asking, do I have any little future Inter Miami players? Uh, my daughter uh, plays, but I, I mean, got to wait for that, that woman's team to come up. And then my son is four. We've got trying to get him into to soccer. He's still not in it yet, but hopefully soon. I, I'll tell you, I didn't like this lineup at all. I hated it. I love seeing Negri start finally because we've been telling you guys Negri is fucking nice. And I can't wait to see him and Alba play together. And it happened today, and it looked great. Uh, even though, I mean, Alba was kind of just all over the place, even though he was technically like a left wing. But, yeah, Borgelin, look, we had a thing for Borgelin last year, but, like, in the right wing, buddy. And he's been thrown out there more times than I even care to, like, really want to care about. We've seen him at that position, Danny, a number of times this year already. Like, I don't know if Tata sees what we see or if we don't see uh, or if we don't see what Tata sees. I mean, do you think that Borgelin carries the potential of being a backup winger on this team? And, and, I, I and, and at this point, and at this point, Campana's injured now again. Yeah, well, so, I was going to get into that for sure. But oh. winger, no, I don't think he, he he's never I don't think he's ever going to be a winger. I think they're just trying to find offense and they just put them out there wide because they like to play with two wide right a left wing and a right wing but it makes yeah. no sense to me because it doesn't work with him out there now i think we haven't seen him enough as a lone striker which i think is where he would probably be best at and he had that opportunity when campana got injured he got moved to the lone striker and there was a point there where he had a ball land right in front of him in front of goal and he wasn't able to push it into the goal um mm -hmm. so he hasn't necessarily done the most with his opportunities either now Getting onto the Campana front, Campana is do the new uh, glass legs. Campana cannot stay healthy. Like who had Campana playing less games than Luis Suarez due to injury? Like That's most people fun. were like, "Oh no, give it to Campana. Campana should be starting. Trade away Suarez. Remember that. Get rid of him. We want Campana. Campana. One, he's never healthy, and two, when he is." He has a few a game here or there that he's good, and then he has a game where he disappears. He hasn't been consistent. So uh, I, I, I'm starting to sell my stock on Campana, unfortunately. Well, the worst part is, is that he was so highly sold to us pre-Messi and post-Messi. Well, because like, he balled out when he got his first opportunity. When we first started seeing yeah. him, he was balling. Uh, I mean, David is saying, David Reichert is saying he's useless. I, I don't know about useless. useless, but he's just having some bad luck. Christian with a K, phenomenal name, by the way, buddy, uh, saying, Danny and Chris, what do you think about Jordi as left wing now that Negri is back as left back and Taylor potential injury? This is something that Danny has mentioned in past episodes. And now yeah. with Taylor out, because let me tell you, if Taylor was playing today, he'd be eating. He would have ate out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I answered it for you, but I'm pretty sure that you agree. With yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I'm here looking at the at the grades that they give, and the whole game, Negri was the highest graded player. All so, right, let's oh, not wait, no, let's I'm, let's not get ahead of ourselves, Anton John. At least Alfonso, no, my fault. David Reese was. I found Alfonso is not better than Campana. He had a goal today, but he's not better than Campana. Let's let's let's. He's more. No, but, he, he, but he did a good job finishing. He, yeah, because he was given a messy pass. Yeah, but Diego Gomez doesn't finish that, and I love Diego Gomez. But Diego Gomez, how many times has he gone wide with that? Yeah, Alejandro, Alejandro saying I like the way Inner satisfied the fans with Messi. Listen, the moment that Messi got up and started running to like, I guess warm up. The entire stadium, the the feel of it, like you literally felt everyone literally cheering. It went from where I'm sorry, and and I know that 
a lot of people are probably going to hate on what I'm going to say, but the supporter section were legitimately the only people with fire in their soul when they were chanting and screaming throughout the whole game in the beginning. And everywhere else, it was just fucking dead. And obviously, there was nothing really being generated throughout the game. But the moment that he got up, everybody just fucking lit up. The whole stadium still woke up at that the point? The whole stadium. The whole stadium. It's really fucking crazy. That's not like good. Like this guy, if you see a fart cloud coming out of his ass, people would stand up for that. I don't get it. I mean, I get it. You don't get it? I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But like I've man, it's just kind of it's 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 kind of it's like a shell shock because, you know, you've been to these games before Messi came. And then now that Messi's here, it's like you get it. You get the craze. I was telling my daughter about the game, how he came in on, uh, in the second half and sort of just in the matter of what, five, seven minutes, we scored two goals. Yep. She's like, if I was playing with Messi, I'd fucking kill myself. And I'm like, well, I mean, not that, not that crazy. But like, imagine you're playing with Messi. You think you're good, but you're nobody. You're playing with the greatest player on the whole fucking planet. Mm-hmm. So, well, uh, do you want to touch anything else on the first half? Do you want to talk about Ryan Saylor's horrible foul? Uh, well, I you could talk about it more than I can because I literally it was sloppy. Slept- I stepped away from my seats two minutes before so I can go get Dippin' Dots. Oof, oof. Just so you know, you just offended Messi's number one cocksucker right here. Don't get oh, it? I Irwin. literally... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, wait, 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 wait. Let me touch up on this. Irwin, I literally, for the last minute and 34 seconds, talked about how great he is and how impactful he is to this team. And you're literally going to get the only phrase that I said negative out of the one minute and 34 seconds of when I said, I don't get it. You were really doing this, Erwin. No come, no come tanta mierda, brother. Por favor. Don't disrespect the GOAT, Chris. Oh, my God. I literally respected him for 98% of that, that, that transaction. Don't disrespect the GOAT. That's all I'm saying. Um. So the first half, Ryan Saylor was the reason we were down. Because be although... For my although we um although we weren't necessarily doing great we didn't give up many chances the defense we were we were playing very defensive and i was surprised because our guest mitchell from uh from a couple of days ago literally said hey we press and we press a lot they did not press us which was a positive yeah. thing yeah right like i when they when i saw that i was like oh maybe we have a chance because I knew that we had Messi come in in the second half. I knew Jordi Alba was probably going to come in in the second half, Diego Gomez. So I was excited. Um, but, you know, um, I, I don't know. The first half, it, it was okay. It was okay. I guess it's the best way I could put it. It was okay for the team we had out there, the formation we had out there, the energy in the stadium from what you're saying. Going down 1-0 into the half and knowing what we had coming in the second half, I didn't feel that bad. Now the second half comes around. Yeah. Messi comes in. Completely different game. Before we get into the second half, I want to give you uh, or ask you something real quick and ask the chat also. What do you guys think of the fact that Messi came out here and played the whole half? Because to me, and I know I'm, I, I'm, some people probably disagree with me, but to me, if he was able to play a whole half Today, I think he could have given us 10, 15 minutes on Wednesday. He probably could have. He probably could have. And, you know, I've been thinking about it for the last week or so, about Messi and his playing time and his injury. Danny, I really think that at this point, that does not make any decisions. I don't think that the medical staff is making any decisions unless there's like a tear or unless there's like a fracture like, I think they're legitimately just leaving the decision up to him and like, hey, do you feel good? And he's like, All right. yeah, I but could I'm probably play. You. Right, I get it. But I'm talking to you as a fan of this team. Yeah. When they came into the season, they literally told us, that's cute, Leagues Cup, MLS Cup, all that is cute. But this is, this this is, is our baby. Champions Cup is what yeah. we're prioritizing. This yeah. is what matters to us. This is what we need to win. If this is what we need to win, he should, if he was able to play 
45 minutes, and I know a lot of people saying that maybe he was gassed halfway through, but if he was able to run out there for 45 plus minutes, right, it was six minutes of extra time. So 50 yeah. minutes. If he was able to play 50 minutes today, he could have given us 10, 15 on Wednesday. And that might have made a difference because that if we don't win Champions Cup, which is in major jeopardy, a lot of people are going to consider this season as a failure, even though we're not even halfway through it. But that was what we needed to win. That was a priority. So you think you think that if we don't win this or get far in this, it's a failure, even if we win other trophies? I think this is this was obviously if we win the MLS Cup at the end of the year, you're like, okay, it wasn't an all complete failure. But for it to be a complete success, Champions Cup it was the net was is what's necessary. That's the only international. I mean, if you want to count Leagues Cup, I guess, but th that's the only international trophy. That's the one that would have gotten us to the Club World Cup next year. Like, that's what you want. So, yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, and and look, Grace is mentioning. Look, Grace, you have a, a pretty good comment here. You guys want to win the championship with this defense. I imagine that when we do decide to compete, like, after this, you know, after the triple C, then we'll probably have a different defense at that point. But at this point, I think that we can compete with the defense that we have. In the, in the Champions Cup, I can see why everybody's saying that maybe we can't compete. But in the MLS, you can compete with this defense. Like with, Look at today, we had Noah Allen and Ryan Saylor as our center backs. David Ruiz, which is a, a, a random right back that shouldn't be playing right back, even though he's been playing it well. And then you have um, Negri, who just came back from injury. Yeah. With that, we were playing against the Colorado Rockies, oh, Rockies, Rapids team that couldn't score on us they did it. they had two shots on target uh, or maybe you know one shot on target all first half like if it wasn't for that random horrible slide tackle by ryan sailor which, yeah. which was so ill-timed if you were to look at that replay it was so ill-timed it made no sense to me what happened there we would have gotten out with a clean sheet probably in that first half so this defense wasn't necessarily giving up shots and goals left and right well, so. and the and the and the last goal. I mean, we can get to the last goal later on after we talk a little bit. Go ahead. No, oh, I was throwing yeah. one up for Tommy one time, and uh, and the tribal chief. Yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, yeah, I heard of what the Rock won the championship or something like that. No, no, but there was a tag team match. It's the longest tag team match I've ever seen in my life. It lasted like an hour, but it was it was good. It was entertaining. That's nice. Um, yeah, me and Tommy are talking about starting a wrestling podcast. So, if any wrestling fans. Let us know if you'd be down for that. That would be phenomenal. And um, I mean, after after Messi got on, then what? I think uh, I think Sunderland came off. No, that's when Campana got off. That's when he got injured. Now I couldn't see from my perspective what happened with Campana because he it was on the other side of the field from where we sit. What is it that exactly happened to Campana? Uh, from what I was reading, a lot of people are saying it could be hamstring. Um, I don't know. My like I said, I was my eyes were flipping back and forth between two screens. When I looked back, yeah. Campana was already on the floor. So I'm not sure exactly what happened to him and why he ended up on the ground. But I mean, at this point, I'm not necessarily surprised when he gets injured. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. it's unfortunate and. and uh -huh. No, I was going to say Trukotu is saying I'll never predict a Borgelin hat trick again. I mean, look. A goal you can predict. I don't know about a hat trick. And everybody is mentioning hamstring. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I thought that's what I heard. And um, and Dennis Lopez wrestling before hockey. Dennis, I promise you, I, I've considered hockey. But I only do podcasts where I feel comfortable talking about the sport or wrestling. Because I kind of feel like I know it almost like the back of my hand. I can talk about it easily. Hockey, even though I love it, I, c I couldn't break it down for you. And so I, I wouldn't... Or put any product out there that I don't I don't feel comfortable talking about. And there's been um, a couple people actually in the inner Miami fandom that do talk hockey. So like, hey, yeah, but they're probably the only so. ones listening. So if if the people hosting it are the only ones that are gonna listen, what do you got going yeah, there, then, Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So yeah, is there something wrong with this medical staff? Like at some point, you have to start questioning the medical staff or the training staff, the 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 the, the trainers. Like there has to be something. Like at, 
injuries are a part of sports and of every team, and everybody goes through it. But at the rate that we are getting injured, it's starting to become um, – it can't be a coincidence. At some point, things stop being a coincidence. So, look, David said, 50th hammy, fire the training staff into the sun. I, and I don't like to say – fire somebody because I don't know enough about, you know, what they do and how they can avoid it. But man, it has to be put into question. Like for this to be this many injuries, it really is. It's really weird. Well, and, and Clara's mentioning a good point. We don't even play on turf and have more injuries than anybody else. And I want to mention this something here because a lot of people used to hate on Phil Neville and a lot of people used to put blame on Phil Neville for his practices or whatever, and that's why a lot of people were getting injured. I People have been considering the same thing about the medical staff back then, but since it was Phil Neville, it's like, oh, Phil Neville. And look at what we're doing now, talking about the medical staff. I mean, Phil Neville could have kept Neville. us undefeated. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just here talking, you know. I'm, we're just talking. Just two guys. Hey, hey, Steve, I, I, I actually said that just a couple of minutes ago, that he is the new glass legs. And I'm, I'm starting to, unfortunately, as much as of a Campana fan that I am, I'm starting to, to get ready to sell on his stock. I, I, I don't believe that he could either stay healthy or stay consistent uh, very often. So it's unfortunate, but I'm starting to lose my, my optimism with Campana. Well, it's uh, the dude is mentioning they need to stretch, do yoga, acupuncture, something. That's what happens when you use when you lose Yedlin, and now Calendar isn't doing that kind of stuff. So, and there definitely <laughs> does need to do that. Uh, and Freddie, you're you're catching on, buddy. I got sleeves. It is a world record. A lot of people and he found out that you guys were betting. He found out you guys are betting on him. So now he's trying to to mess up with people's money. That's what he's trying to do. You know what's funny right. is I actually have a sleeveless shirt right over there on the table. I was going to put that bad boy on, but I'm like, eh, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to change. All right. So second half starts. Messi comes in. Messi immediately makes a difference. Messi is receiving the ball deep in, in his own half, bringing mm -hmm. the ball up. He's creating in a span of what? It was like 12, 13 minutes. We went from yeah. down 1-0 to up 2-1. to one, And that was, I mean, you have to put that on Messi's back. Messi yes. literally put the team on his back and started creating players. The defense started gravitating towards Messi, giving room to other players. Like that, that cross from was it Ruiz to uh, to yes. uh, to uh, Afonso? Like, yeah, he was all by himself that on the left side because the defense are sucked in to the middle and the and the and the right side. Like, it's Messi is an absolute game changer, and yeah. at, after that second goal. I'm sure you, like most people in the chat and myself, all felt like, oof, Monterrey must be shitting themselves right now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Be They're shitting. cooked. They're cooked. Be because, one, you see how Messi's playing in the first 12 minutes he's playing. And then all that stuff came out about the drama after the game on Wednesday, where, you know, Spicy Messi showed up after the game. And then this kid, I forgot the guy's name from Monterrey, that came out with a video today talking about his side of the story. Nobody gives a shit about your side of the story, my guy. Don't try yeah. to get the, the publicity now because you know your name's in the papers. Nobody, I forgot your name and I'll never remember it. But he came out, started talking about what happened. Messi is upset. And he's going to come out on Wednesday. And Monterrey fans, I know, are feeling it. Feeling it. So that's well, what I mean, look after minute 60. Well, look, look at the impact that he had in a half, Danny. Put mm -hmm. that in a whole game off rip. Off rip, that changes the entire dynamic of the game. Um, changes the whole dynamic. Rohan's asking, will they suspend Alba, like ESPN was saying. I haven't heard about them. Why would they suspend Alba? What did Alba do? Uh, I know that they, they went. I, I don't know what they did. If you could fill me in. Um I do know that supposedly Messi and Tata were going after the refs. And, um, but I don't know. I, I haven't well, heard I about anything into, crazy happening. I ran into a couple that, that listens to our show, and they and one of their biggest concerns was the the way that the refs have been refing these games for us, uh, or better said, against us. 
you know, it's 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 kind of like the refs kind of have it out for Inter Miami. Maybe it's just because so. of the maybe it's because of the players, because of their stature, and they expect something a little different. But I I I tend to agree a little bit. I think that some of these referees they kind of they're prepped before the game. Like, hey, you got these guys, and uh, ooh, Tony Axe is mentioning that Alba allegedly, uh, basically Allen Iverson, someone from Monterey, <laughs> Latrosse Priwa, or oh yeah, nah, Latrosse Priwa, uh, wrong wrong braids, my bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He probably, um, has, he probably has choked somebody. He, he might have. He might have. I'm surprised he never did that to Larry Brown. Um, I haven't heard anything about that. Unfortunately, I, today's been a busy day for me, so I, I wasn't on my phone looking at stuff. I did yeah. randomly see that some guy came out and had like his own like little video for people. But um, I don't know. If it's all speculation and there's no proof, I can't imagine that anything would happen to him. And to the point that you say that the refs are roughing against into Miami, I highly doubt that. Like, I hope that they are trying to call things down the middle. But I do think that if they were going to ref in like uh, in favor of somebody, they would ref in favor of us. Because everybody wants to see Messi in that final on June 2nd for the CONCACAF champions. I really do believe that. I believe that if they're going to do anything for a team, I think it would be for us. So I, I don't believe that they're refing against us. Ooh, Kevin is bringing up a point here. Same ref today who pissed Messi last season with Nashville. So all I'm saying is I think uh, a zesty Messi, spicy Messi is going to be a bad problem for Monterrey, Mon Monterrey. And if he made this impact in a 10-minute span, just imagine if he starts the game against Monterrey. Gassed well, up. Let, let, let's put that into perspective. He did make that impact in 10 minutes, but then what did he do for the last 30? He was gassed. We didn't Give score again. And, well, 100 percent No, no, I'm not I'm not I'm not doubting it. I've always said that I think that we'll win on Wednesday if Messi plays. Yeah. But what I'm saying is we scored those first two goals, but we, we stopped scoring, right? Like it wasn't like we put yeah. up four or five. In Monterrey, I mean Monterrey is obviously a billion times better than the Rapids. Yeah, we're gonna be playing in Mexico, so it definitely will be more difficult. But with that said, I do think that Monterrey is shitting in their pants. Well, and Irwin thinks that that's why they that's why Messi played today. I think he should have played ten minutes on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, if the the way that you see him play today, you would imagine that he could have given at least ten minutes. That's but then it. it's that's like, what okay, I'm saying. when do you want the ten minutes? You want it in the beginning? You want it in the end? Is it gonna make At a difference end, towards the end? I mean, but that's... could you imagine? Could you imagine if he would have came in in the seventy fifth minute? In the seventy fifth minute, if he comes in or the eightieth minute, Monterrey no longer are uh, are as aggressive offensively because they don't want to get beat by Messi. At that point, they're one one, and they're like, "All right, we're one one. We got the draw. We got the away goal. Let's buckle down and make sure that we take this one home because Messi's here, and we don't want to get you know randomly scored on." at the very end of the game and that would have changed things with Messi on the pitch even with 10 men I am 100% that yes I know that we were down 10 men and I know that that maybe that maybe they wouldn't have bring, brought him on because of that but if yeah. he would have been suited up I would have tried it I would have tried it I, I think that that you got nothing Monterrey. to lose at that point really I, I think uh, I think that would have changed uh, Monterrey's strategy but yes the 10 men thing does screw it up because I think that that's why we didn't see Campana either because we went more defensive. And uh, Marasovic is saying if a Ruiz ejection still happens. Yeah, I, I understand. The 10-man thing does make it more difficult. But when yeah. you're putting out the lineups, you don't know that, he, that, that that's going to happen. So he should have been yeah. on the bench, in my opinion. I think. And then at that point, okay, it, we're down to 10 men. We can't put him in. But I think he should have been out there. I, I, not out there. I think he should have been on the bench. And maybe if the, if the red card happens, maybe you don't play him. Because you go more defensive, but I, I would have had him out there. And if the ten, if that red card doesn't happen, we probably don't give up a goal. Period. And I think he should be out there for the last ten minutes. So, hey, hey Juan, thanks for the comment there, buddy. Saying that we don't know crap about Monterrey, uh, it's oh. a good thing because in our last episode on Wednesday, we had someone that knew a lot about Monterrey, and we had him in two languages, in English and in Spanish, and we're also going to have him again. 
this week in English and in Spanish. So mm -hmm. we might not know too much about Monterrey, but we get people that know a little bit more than us about Monterrey. So, Juan, but, I, but I'm curious, Juan, why did you say we don't know a crap about Monterrey? Like, I know we what, don't, what but like, what is there to know? You guys are overrated. You not guys overrated. finally scored when we were down to 10 men. Barely. So, uh, I mean, I get it. I and mean, Monterrey is a good team, but I think slightly overrated because I mean, everybody thought that they were going to kill us even if Messi played. And without Messi, you barely won. So, I mean, Juancito, Juancito, are you a fan of Monterrey? I, I think you should I reconsider I, I your options, so. buddy. I would assume that he is. Uh, uh, yeah. I would have would so. All right. Uh, Why? Miami will tremble when they see the stadium, bro. Why? Because they got that big mountain in the background. What's so special about your stadium, nah. my guy? Nah, I don't know. I what do you know. mean we're not fair? We're very fair. I mean, we are an Inter Miami podcast, so obviously, we're not going <laughs> to be like, you know, telling you that you guys but, are the greatest team. We saw you guys. No, you but, guys are a fraud. But, but I was, but I was giving them a lot of respect. Everybody was telling me that so we were going to get rocked, even if Messi played. We were going to lose three, four to one. I was like, man, this team must be amazing. Oh, and then this is no the messy, name. and then and then you're mid to Ray. <laughs> That's what you are, Dennis. <laughs> this is this is the comment of the night. Mid to Ray, mid uh, mediano. So uh, let me tell you something. Oh, and look, we got we got a little Toronto love over here. What's going on, in Italy? Um, I um, I definitely mid to Ray. If we win on Wednesday and eliminate. Them, they would definitely go down as mid terrain for forever. Um, but look, we, we thought that you guys were going to dominate, especially when Messi didn't play. And up until the 60th minute, when we got a red card, we dominated the most of the, I mean, not dominated, but we had control of most of that game because you guys couldn't figure out what to do offensively. But again, we're, we're getting off subject. We're going to talk plenty about Monterrey on Monday. So yeah. uh, Messi comes on, scores a goal, gets the assist. Things are looking good. And um, then, as usual, we give up a late goal off a counter. Yeah. Now, um, who do you blame for that goal that we just gave up right there to end the game? Well, I didn't see it. I mean, listen, it happened so fast, to be honest. The way that we gave that goal up, I don't really know who to blame because uh, Noah Allen was looking at Negri like if he was at fault for the goal. But then Negri was looking at someone else, like if they were at fault for the goal. So, like, I didn't really know who to give the blame to. Um, well, it looked like Busquets was oh left trailing the, the person that scored. And, I mean, you can't count on on, on Busquets with his pace uh, getting back on anybody. Um, and then my name, my is, name Jeff. is... My name is Jeff. You have if, to say it like that. This is... Can this Miami podcast be more fair to not Miami teams? I think we're pretty we're pretty fair. We literally have a guest on every week to come and tell us about the teams. I I I feel like I'm pretty fair always. Uh, actually, oh, a lot of a lot oh. of our a lot of our listeners call us messy haters. So, oh okay oh, okay okay okay. Got you. My name is Jim. <laughs> he says that that was sarcasm, bros. Okay. Ah uh, okay. That's All right. Now I would I will. I don't know if you've seen pictures of the stadium in Monterrey. That, that, that big mountain that you can see from inside the stadium. It does look very nice. Uh, it does look very, very nice. But, um, uh, and look, and, and who lover hates Messi. Oh, you're going to have a tough day on Wednesday. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't think that Messi gives a crap about what the stadium looks like. I don't think Messi gives a shit about what these people are, are yelling. I know that in, when it's Mexico versus USA, Mexican fans like to yell things and get the games like delayed. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Messi, Suarez, or anybody cares what anybody's chanting. That's not going to affect absolutely anybody on this team. Drake doesn't understand Spanish, so that's not going to affect him. Like, w nobody's worried about the fans, about the scenery, about the mountain. Like, none of that's going to matter. It's going to be strictly on the pitch. And if you really think that that's going to affect any of these players that have played for so long in such big games – Across this world, you're crazy. You're absolutely out of your mind. If you think that these players on this team are actually going to be affected by Monterrey, like it's not happening. Now, 
Will they not win? Maybe, but I promise you it won't be because it's in Mexico. It's that, that's yeah. not why it's happening. That's not why they're going to lose. I mean, Juan is chiming in again. Not the stadium, no, the no, hostile what, vibes. Like, what hostile. Are you, what are you talking about? What hostile vibes? I don't think Messi's worried about anybody running on the pitch. Have you seen a security guard? He runs up and down the pitch next to him. And Messi's not worried about no hostile vibes. Nobody's running onto the pitch to attack them. Like, you guys overrate that garbage. Nobody gives a shit about your home field advantage. So fucking stupid. They what care. They think about? they think the players come into the stadium and they're like, oh man, that fucking mountain back there. Do you feel do you feel I that fucking, vibe? Do you feel they're, they're, that? They're yelling at us. Oh fuck. fuck. Come on, man. Like maybe if it was like the today's today's squad, like these young kids, I could get that. Maybe they would go in there and be like, man, like this is a big game. Like they're listening to the chance. But like the players that we have right now that have won World Cups and been in, in big situations, they don't give a crap about that. I'm sorry. Nowhere is that gonna affect them. Right? And, and if you think that, you're 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 mistaken, I promise you. So. Uh, and and Ronald, but Ronald is mentioning something factual. That mountain is a vibe, bruh. It is, it is, I it mean, is. Though. Like I've seen pictures, and, and it does look pretty awesome. Look, I mean, it's it's a nice fucking, it's a nice backdrop for your fucking computer screen. Yeah, it is nice. But you think uh, Messi's oh, worried about it when he's going into the stadium? Like, absolutely not. No, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, Monterrey plays good at home." I don't give a shit. I don't care. They said that they play good everywhere, and they they play like shit in Miami. Exactly. So, Super suspect. Hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Um, we we've gotten way off topic. Uh, but today's yeah, game, no, today's been, game was pretty boring. Outside of those like twelve minutes when Messi dominated, today's game was pretty boring. They ended up getting that counter. Busquets was left trailing. Obviously, he couldn't do it well. Uh, and and unfortunately, Drake couldn't get to that. He almost blocked that penalty, by the way. I didn't mention that. He got a finger, I think, on that penalty. Yeah, he went the right wasn't direction. Able, yeah. But wasn't able to block it. Um, and it was just disappointing because you had the lead 2-1, and then you give it up in like the 88th, 89th minute, something like that. So that was very disappointing that they gave it up that late. But, you know, it's a draw in the 88th minute. It's a draw. We are now 3-3-2, and two, and we're third in the East. Well, and Peaches is mentioning something here. He's literally been on the world's biggest stages, played the absolute highest level and championships. He's not of afraid of a fucking mountain in Mexico. I added no. the mountain, the, the F word, Peaches. I'm sorry. <laughs> she, Peaches is a lot more decent than I am, but I added that. Uh, but I'm, but I'm, that's what I don't understand, man. People make such a big deal. Like, and again, if we had David Ruiz, Kremaki, like Noah Allen going to play over there in that big game against this good team, then I think maybe the nerves will kick in. But ain't nobody worried. Luis Suarez ain't worried about that. Busquets isn't worried about that. Like, these guys are used to that. You have Kristoff, who's played in Ukraine. Ukraine gets just as crazy as South America. Like, you got players that have played in these in these environments. Toto Aviles has played in the Argentinian League. He's seen an environment. You have uh, uh, Chelo Weigan that just came from Boca. He's played in those derbies between Boca and River Plate. Like, he, they've seen environments. Like, they're not worried about your fucking mountain. I promise you. Like, th there's no we vibe this... in Monterrey that's going to scare absolutely anybody on this team. Yeah, we need to save this for the for the, for the the next show because we, we are getting way too off topic. And all this Monterrey that's, like, swirling around what's going on is, like, completely. One thing I want to mention about the game since we really have nothing else too much too important. I got to tell, I got to say that the people traveled very well at the stadium from Colorado. Like really, I saw a lot of jerseys. Wow. And they well, were cool. spruced out. They were spruced out pretty much in a lot of places. And that's something that I looked at. And I'm like, wow, it sucks that you guys traveled pretty well and Messi's not going to play. And then look at that. They get a treat. They get to be yeah, able yeah, to see scored. Messi. He scored. It was a tie game, so your team essentially won, I guess, you know, coming yeah. out of a, a, an away game. So it was a treat for people that uh, came and traveled. So, Yeah, no, 100%. And then uh, PCUS uh, says, Danny, take PCUS. it easy about the mountain, bro. 
PTS. Okay. Bruh. Take it easy about the mountain. Well, I mean, it's the mountain. And I guess because Mexicans like to chant Marica a lot. It's, no, it's not Marica. That's what Colombians do. What was it that they, that they were? Puto, was it? That they were chanting uh, in the in the Mexico USA game that they were getting in trouble for? Yeah, puta or puto. Something, Ma. something. Like, do you really think that that's gonna like that's that's right there? That's what's gonna hurt our players. They're gonna be like, oh, I can't, I can't go on. Like the, at, at the veracity that they're chanting this, I just can't go on. Like, come on. Yeah. Nobody worried about that. But again, we're gonna get into that on Monday with Eddie from uh from the Monterrey yeah. uh coverage. So uh this should be fun on on uh on Monday. Uh, so today we, we have three wins, three draws, two losses. Uh, again, when Messi plays, we don't lose. So that, that continues. That's why I don't doubt that we're going to win against Monterrey. Um, uh, would it be enough to, to move on? I don't know, but I, I don't think that we're going to, to lose again, I'm getting ahead of myself again, but we don't lose with Messi. We are now three, three and two. We're third in the East. And overall, how do you feel about the, the result today, Chris? I'm not a big fan. These last two MLS games, I have a feeling that we're going to look back at those these last two MLS games and we're going to be like, we needed those. We needed those points. Ah. Why? Because you think that going on the road to uh, to, to what? To, uh, to Atlanta or Nashville is all of a sudden going to... We're not scared of mountains in Mexico. I don't care about going I to mean, the playoffs and playing on the road either. Like, I don't, we don't care I don't, about home field advantage. I don't mind it either, but I want some extra home games, bro. Yeah, okay. Personally, okay, I, I can see I want, that. Yeah, personally, as, I want some extra right, home but, games. But as the team, we're not going to be like, oh, man, we should have beat uh, NYCFC. Now we got to travel to, I don't know what, uh, yeah, Cincinnati. Columbus. Oh, no, Cincinnati. Yeah. Those fans, those, those, what was it, hostile vibes in Cincinnati. Like, you know what you did. All right, uh, one, we got a 145 Eddie for sure. No, Eddie was cool. Yeah, Eddie I mean, was you could good. 145 maybe good. in the Spanish show. Yeah, in the Spanish show. Because remember, if you do them in the English show, you still got to do a Spanish show with us after that. So, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, like like Crab said, it's, it's gas bagging time. I, I, I'm out of things to talk about. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about, Chris? Uh, no, man. Actually, I was able to first, for the first time, experience how they closed in the the fan zone the fan area um cool, kind of sucks i mean it's cool oh, I but it. like i can't bring my soccer ball to play soccer in there anymore it's fucking brutal like you know i wanted to play i like that i felt like it 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 literally made the stadium bigger though it does and it's cool that you can go there during halftime mexican Vutro goes out there and nobody was out there during halftime so like that's good. Oh, I know. Yes, that was dope because that same thing. Eventually, eventually people shit. are gonna realize. I, I know. I people usually shit. eventually will realize. But we went. We found the table. We sat down. We were vibing. Yeah, it was. It was nice peaceful. and empty. Yeah. Uh huh. Because yeah, everybody that was, that was else cool. that sits, everybody that sits everywhere else doesn't go back to that area, even when it wasn't closed off. But now it's even better because not many people go there, and I went there. And uh, guys, it was super packed. Don't even go back there. <laughs> hey, Juan, do me a favor. And if you want to unsubscribe after, oh, you know, feel free. But go ahead, subscribe and hit the notification. Oh, I, I want you on here on Monday. I want you here on Monday with Eddie when we're talking about the Monterrey game. Food lover, you also. Go ahead. And I would love to to uh, poo-poo all over Monterrey. Just don't spam food lover, please. Please. No. You're... You're kind of spamming, food lover. You've been like this close to getting the boot, bro. Come on, just chill, bro. <laughs> sometimes you have good days. Sometimes you have bad days. Today's been kind of, eh, you've been all right. Come uh, on. Well, yes, please join join us on Monday. Uh, at 9 o'clock, we'll be doing it with Eddie in English and then at 10 o'clock in Espanol. So, uh, so please join us for that because I would love to hear you guys talk. Juan, by the way, oh. I want you to look at this comment right here. We're playing... With like five bucks worth of a team versus your team. Okay. And you guys, you know. Yeah. All right. Kind of All right. Uh, final That's words, it. Chris. Final That's words nothing is else. nothing else. And uh, we're going to preview Monterrey and fucking destroy you guys. That's what we're going to fucking do. I, I mean, I don't know about destroy, but I do think we'll win. But again, we'll talk about that on, on Monday. Um, and that's it. We got nothing else. So uh, uh, that's a good one, Rohan. 
Uh, if you are listening on audio, we appreciate you listening all the way, way to the end. Please leave us five stars, comment, review, all that other good stuff. If you are watching on YouTube, please uh, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. And if you are part of the chat, we appreciate you as always. Uh, thank you, Alejandro, for saying nice hair. Um, we appreciate you sticking with us for the last hour. Uh, we forgive Chris for showing up late because he's usually the first one on here because he drives like a maniac. So it's all good. And we'll be back on Monday with Eddie to talk a little Monterrey. And then at 10 o'clock in Espanol with Eddie, Solana, and Xavi Lavos to talk in Espanol. So uh, until the next one, have a good one.